Not all hair is created equal. Let's face it, humans are weird. We're mostly hairless compared to our mammal cousins, and yet we're not hairless. We've got patches, streaks, stray tufts in mysterious places. We're like nature's half-finished painting. So here's the hairy question. Why does the human body grow hair at all? And more importantly, is there any body hair we actually need? Let's comb through the science. Why do humans even have body hair? To answer that, we need to rewind a few million years. Early humans were much hairier than we are today. We evolved from primates covered in thick fur, which helped regulate body temperature, protected against parasites, and even acted as camouflage. But as humans started walking upright, sweating to cool off, and developing better tools and shelter, we began shedding our full body fur. Why? Because being less hairy made it easier to survive. Less hair meant better cooling through sweat. So yes, we lost a lot of our hair on purpose, but not all of it. It. Turns out, evolution decided to keep the hair that still served a purpose. Even though we ditched the fur coat, we kept a few hairy highlights for specific biological reasons. Let's look at the key zones. Scalp hair. Hair on the top of your head protects your brain, your most important organ, from sun exposure and heat. It traps air close to the scalp, helping regulate temperature and preventing sunburn, especially in environments with little shade. In the pre-hat era, hair was your natural UV shield. Eyebrows and eyelashes. Small but essential. Eyelashes block dust, debris, and insects from reaching your eyes. Eyebrows redirect sweat away from the eyes thanks to their arch shape. Socially, eyebrows also play a huge role in nonverbal communication and facial recognition. Studies show that people struggle more to identify someone without eyebrows than someone without eyes, nose hair, and ear hair. Not pretty, but practical. These hairs act as filters, trapping dust, allergens, and tiny invaders before they reach deeper, more sensitive systems. Systems. They're the bouncers of your respiratory and auditory entrances. These hairs don't just defend you, they alert you. Even subtle movements of nasal or ear hair can trigger sneezing or twitching reflexes, helping your body react faster than your brain can process. Armpit and pubic hair, the misunderstood MVPs. These regions are rich in apocrine sweat glands, which release sweat containing proteins and fats. When that sweat mixes with skin bacteria, it creates body odor. And while that might not sound appealing today, in evolutionary terms, body odor was a chemical signal, a scent-based social cue related to fertility, health, and sexual maturity. In short, body hair didn't just trap heat or reduce friction. It played a role in communication long before language ever existed. And speaking of friction, hair in these regions helps reduce chafing during movement, running, and yes, love. It's nature's built-in anti-rash system. Vellus hair, the invisible protector. Now let's talk about all the other hair, the fine, nearly invisible fuzz that covers most of your body. It's called vellus hair, and while it doesn't keep you warm like fur, it's not useless. Vellus hair enhances sensory feedback, working with your nervous system to detect even tiny environmental changes. A soft breeze, a shift in air pressure, a bug crawling on your skin. You feel it faster because vellus hair amplifies the sensation. It also helps with thermoregulation by aiding sweat evaporation. Some scientists even believe hair may support immune responses or influence the skin microbiome. In other words, we may not fully understand everything hair is doing for us. Even today, why are some people hairier than others? Genetics and hormones. Testosterone plays a big role in terminal hair growth, which is why men tend to have thicker, darker body hair than women. But even beyond gender, ancestry matters. People of Mediterranean or South Asian descent, for instance, often grow more visible body hair than those from East Asian or Native American backgrounds. This variation is completely normal. And just another reminder that human biology isn't one size fits all. And why does hair pop up in weird places as we age? As hormone levels change with age, the body's hair distribution can shift in strange ways. Testosterone can cause scalp hair to thin while simultaneously increasing growth in places like the ears, nose, or eyebrows. In women, a drop in estrogen during menopause can result in new facial hair. In other words, as you get older, your body hair doesn't disappear, it just relocates. Do we still need body hair in the modern world? That depends on what you mean by need. From a survival standpoint, we could probably live without most of it. We have clothes, air conditioning, soap, and antibiotics. But evolution doesn't work like a software update. It's not optimized for modern convenience. It's designed for survival over millennia. So just because something seems outdated doesn't mean it's useless. Hair may seem trivial 
trivial today, but it still contributes to comfort, sensation, protection, and social signaling. It's embedded in how we interact with the world and with each other. And then there's the social layer. Body hair isn't just a biological feature anymore, it's a cultural flashpoint. What counts as normal or attractive varies wildly across countries and time periods. In ancient Egypt, complete body hair removal was considered a sign of cleanliness and sophistication. In the 1970s America, chest hair symbolized rugged masculinity. Today, preferences change depending on generation, gender identity, and fashion cycles. Some see hair as a symbol of liberation, others see smooth skin as modern hygiene. But beneath those opinions lies one simple truth. Our body hair is older than any trend. It arrived here through trial, mutation, and selection, surviving ice ages, predators, and pandemics. So, whether you wax it, shave it, braid it, or dye it neon pink, that's up to you. But make no mistake, your body hair got here honestly. Some hair protects, some hair signals. Some hair just exists quietly until you stub your toe and it tells your brain exactly where the pain is. So the next time you reach for the tweezers, the razor, or the judgment, pause for a second. Every strand is part of your evolutionary survival kit. And if you ever doubt that, just remember, there's a reason even the smoothest humans still grow a little hair. Tell us below. Your question might become our next big episode. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep those notifications on.